I'm Tamar Megin, I'm a professor of cognitive neuroscience here in Cambridge University and I'd like to talk to you a bit how we can get to grips with hand augmentation. So hi at the Plasticity Lab uh, where we're interested in understanding how changes to our body cause changes to our brain. And uh, this is just a cartoon of how we think about how the body is represented in the brain, specifically in these areas in primary cortex that are in charge of communicating with the body in and out. And we were uh, working a lot with this model of trying to understand what happens when you lose uh, a body part uh, to an amputation. And um, importantly, whether we can take advantage of the neural resources that are still available after amputation to better interface with technologies for substitutions. But uh, following my previous visits to SAIFU, I've become fascinated with an alternative model uh, which uh, rather than uh, removing a body part, we can think about what happens when we add a body part through technological augmentation. So we're thinking about extension and um, increased changes to the human motor repertoire and what would that uh, cause to the brain. Uh, which of course led me to uh, Danny Claude and our delightful collaboration uh, into uh, the third thumb, uh, which was, as she explained, specifically designed to allow people to do more with a uh, perfectly able body. So as, as Danny tried to demonstrate, uh, the thumb is controlled by the toes using two degrees of freedom, uh, giving you a proportional control and over a full range of movement. So um, it's incredibly practical and useful. But let's think about it from a neuroscience perspective. So Danny is asking us to use our, uh, our feet in order to control the thumb and then use our hand in collaboration with that in order to increase hand functionality, which um, is pretty messy for the brain. I mean, we were not evolutionarily designed to do exactly that, use our feet in order to complement our hand function. And we know from our research uh, that this actually works pretty well uh, when we train participants, uh, specifically Cambridge students, to use the thumb. They're pretty good at it. Uh, but if we're thinking about, you know, uh, future technology that should be inclusive, the bar should be so much higher than some students in the lab can use it, right? Which uh, led us to collaborate with the Royal Society for their summer science exhibition where people from all over the UK are invited to come and interact with exhibitions and we were exhibiting the thumb there for five days and for uh, 596 participants we've had the opportunity to actually record uh, how well they are at coming to grips with the thumb and the challenge was they only had one minute to use it because we didn't have time to give them any more experience. And uh, we had one of uh, two tasks, so this lovely lady here is demonstrating one of the tasks where you have to pick up um, these uh, pegs just using the thumb without the fingers of the hand. And what you see in the right, right is our amazing, amazing range of participants from the age of 3 to 96. And 96%, sorry, 98% of all of our participants were able within just one minute to meaningfully engage with the thumb in order to manipulate objects within the first minute of just trying. So what does that mean for the future of uh, hand augmentation? I think our study demonstrates that this technology is accessible and available for everyone to interact with. And I think that provides for us really amazing opportunities to think about how we can inter integrate the technology into very specific work environments that require increased dexterity. For example, uh, surgical theaters or uh, assembly lines requiring, requiring manual dexterity. But we can also think about using the technology um, as an alternative to assistive technology where this technology doesn't work well or just doesn't exist. For example, our children that were born with a different body um, or people that are experiencing a temporary disability that is currently not being served by assistive technology. I just want to give a quick shout out to my amazing lab and thank you to Danny. Thank you.